Wow. Winston Churchill said that it takes a courageous man to stand up and speak. It also takes a courageous man to sit down and listen. Our mutual courage has brought us together today to experience ideas worth sharing. So thank you all for coming here to hear and listen. I am a writer. I'm an accessibility buddy. I'm an adventurer. I'm a vintage Vespa scooter collector and enthusiast. I'm a chef, a scuba diver, a blogger. I'm a petrol head. I'm a roamer of the globe. And yes, I am blind. When people ask me about my sight loss, I almost always say that I only went blind because I got bored with living in a sighted world and needed a new challenge. <laughs> I'd like to start today by challenging everybody here. <laughs> so if I can start today by challenging everyone here, if you'd like to participate, please shut your eyes tightly. This is only going to take 30 seconds, and don't cheat, I will be checking. And then stand up, please. Now, again, I'm watching. Don't cheat. <laughs> Keep your eyes closed. And with a firm handshake, I'd like you to reach out and greet the person to your left and the person to your right. <laughs> Not as easy as it seems. Welcome to my world. <laughs> All right, sit down again. You can open your eyes and, and refocus on the stage. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. And rest assured, nobody was scratching through your stuff. I was here watching the whole time. It was totally fine. Next, I'd like to just share some interesting stats and facts with you, things that I discovered after losing my ability to see with my eyes. The first being the amount of blind people in the world. Well, up to the point of becoming a blind person, I don't recall ever meeting another one. Of course, there were the famous ones like Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. And there was the guy at the traffic lights with his tin mug in hand navigating his way through cars. I don't even know if he really was blind. But I was quite shocked to find out that there are 285 million visually impaired or legally blind people on the planet, of which 40 million are totally blind, 100% blind, like me. The most alarming stat is that less than 1% of all these blind people are employed. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree there's a vast difference between being unemployed and unemployable. I was terrified of falling into the latter category. Now I'd like to step back and tell you a little bit about how I went from being Chris the Scooter Guy to becoming Chris the Blind Scooter Guy. For as long as I can remember, I've been addicted to adventure. From a very young age, when I was a little boy, it was books by authors like Enid Blyton that caught my attention. I wanted to be one of the famous five of Secret Seven. And then as I became a teenager, it was uh, Tintin. I roamed the globe with the Thompsons and all the eclectic characters, and that fed my curious nature and kept the adventurous spirit in me alive. As I became a young adult, I discovered the writings of the travel and adventure author, Bill Bryson. And I think that was the first time that I really knew that's what I'd like to do. I want to be a storyteller. I want to write about travel and adventure. Of course, things don't always work out the way you plan, and when I completed my studies, I started something of a normal career. Well, kind of normal. I became a chef. And to keep the adventure alive again, my chef career, my culinary career, took me to strange places. I worked as a development and training chef who specialized in working in remote destinations. So I cooked on St. Helena Island in the South Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> That's obviously a saint. Little Cayman Island in the Caribbean, and some awesome places around the globe. But the whole time I knew there was something else out there. There was something waiting for me. I had to find a way to become the storyteller that I so desperately wanted to be. Now, I've always believed that if you want to tell a good story, the only way to write a good book is to live the adventure first. 
then you will be able to sell that book, which is what I desperately needed to do. So in 2013, I took my love for the scooters, as well as adventure and travel, and together with three other guys, uh, we climbed onto four little 150cc two-stroke LML Vespa scooters. And we traveled all the way from Cape Town, the most beautiful city in the world, I'm sure you'll all agree, to Dublin, the most Irish city in the world. <laughs> Any Irishmen? <laughs> The trip was uh, primarily a pediatric healthcare awareness campaign, starting here at the bottom of Africa at the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital, and finishing after traveling for eight months, touching 20 countries with no support vehicle at Our Lady's Children's Hospital in Ireland. Unfortunately for me, in the middle of Africa, I got as sick as a dog. I had to fly home for medical attention, unable to get the treatment that I needed in the deepest, darkest continent. And once back home, the doctors pumped me full of vitamins, a couple of courses of antibiotics and a bit of rest, and I felt okay. And they said, go and complete your trip. We think you're all right. They were wrong, and I was wrong to believe them. But nonetheless, I wanted to get back on the scooter. The fumes of the two-stroke were sorely missed. The rest of my team were at this point in the top corner of Africa, ready to cross over to Europe, and there was no opportunity for me to get a scooter there. So I flew to Paris, the most romantic city in the world. And there I climbed onto a lone scooter, and I traveled south all the way across France and down Italy to meet the rest of the team when they arrived in the, the European continent. It was a little ironic that I had missed out on the top corner of Africa, but ended up doing more mileage than the rest of the team with my solo spin south. But I figured that would just make for a couple of cool chapters for my pending book anyway. And the entire time that I traveled in Europe, certainly while I was alone, I didn't feel too well. I knew something was wrong. I felt tired. I got dizzy really easy. I figured, so many months on the road, it's the exhaustion of the trip. I just need to have a bit of rest. A good few hours on the sofa in front of the TV when I got back home would sort my body out. After traveling for 30,000 kilometers, me and the other guys completed our trip in Dublin. And there I got to try a Guinness for the very first time. Unfortunately, it wasn't to my taste <laughs> at all. <clears throat> when I arrived back home, my health went from bad to worse. The doctors just couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They tested everything. Lumbar punctures, my blood, x-rays, you name it. Until June of 2014, my sight had suddenly disappeared, and I saw an ophthalmologist. And then they diagnosed what was in fact wrong. A rare virus had attacked the retinas at the back of my eyes. And although the doctors had managed to save my life, I sat quite stunned when they told me that I'd probably be blind for the rest of my time on this planet. Not only was I blind, but I was a very sick puppy. For the following six months, I was pretty much confined to my bed. A wheelchair got me to the toilet. I really lost connection with the world. Of course, time heals. And uh, eventually I did become strong again and started to seek out a way to connect with the world. I tried to figure out how does a blind man now live in this world that's clearly designed for the sighted. I missed Facebook and Twitter and the interaction that I had with everybody. It was almost like a solitary confinement, a little bubble that I was trapped in, a prison sentence for which I had commit no crime. Ultimately, I did become strong again, and uh, then I had to seek out technology. So I had to learn about something called accessibility. A Wikipedia described the word accessible to mean when a product, a device, a service, software, or an environment is specifically designed with the disabled community in mind. We as the blind community have something called a screen reader. And what this does is it allows us to navigate either our laptop computers, or a mobile phone using audio instead of sight. 
So I hover my finger around, and whatever is underneath it, provided it's labeled properly, gets spoken to me. Now, although I resisted wholeheartedly to go this brand, ultimately I went to Apple devices because <laughs> I found their products to, the, to be the most intuitive and blind friendly. And besides, all the software is standard. It just needs to be activated in the settings. I'm sure that some of you have heard of Siri and perhaps even had the pleasure or displeasure of asking her silly questions. <laughs> to me, Siri is an absolute lifesaver. She has such heavy conversations with me that <laughs> I can't help but wondering what she looks like. <laughs> this little bit of technology almost, the voice sounds like a, something out of a Star Trek movie. And what I will say to these Trekkies out there that helped develop this technology, thank you. Live long and prosper. <laughs> I've prepared a short demonstration video that shows you how I use a little bit of this tech. Take a look. You'll see my frustration, but you'll get the drift of what I'm able to do. This is how I navigate around an iOS device without the use of sight. As I touch the screen and run my finger from app to app, the voiceover software tells me what icon is being touched. I then double tap it to open it. Messenger, Facebook, Twitter. If I want to open an app, I double tap on the last one selected. Twitter. I can also scroll left to right to skip between the buttons. Line scooter dime. Line scooter dime. Capital T. H. S. Space. This. S space is H F W space H B space F B L at N D space blind U S E R space user W R T E S space rice F N space on big space F M B C B F F K period MacBook period header group body edit text insertion at end of text. This is how a blind user writes on a MacBook period. Please send an email to my wife. What's the subject of your email? I'm really hungry. What would you like your email to say? Can we get pizza for dinner tonight? Question mark. Here's your email message to Tamlin Venter. It says, can we get pizza for dinner tonight? Ready to send it? Send. Okay, Christopher, I'll send it. What's next? Hashtag blind man can. All right. <laughs> Okay, be quiet. So you can see there's much frustration, and nonetheless, with this accessible technology, I am able to do pretty much everything that a sighted person is able to. I post my own Facebook status updates, I tweet myself, reply and send all my own emails, Google search things, and uh, listen to my favorite audiobooks, stream my favorite radio stations, and I listen to clips on YouTube, which are normally TEDx presentations. I've even managed to find the little skip ad button. <laughs> Most importantly, I get to write, and I get to do what I really wanted to do. Now, of course, video is a little more challenging. There is, however, a way that this can become accessible to the blind people, the blind community, and that is by having it audio described. So what happens is you have a narrator come along and tell you exactly what's happening in the picture, and any text that appears on the screen, they read it to you. So what I've prepared for you next is a short collage, little snippets of my scooter trip, shows us riding the scooters through the mud and all of that type of thing, and we've had someone put an audio-described version of, of this video in text. It's a little bit of an exaggerated version. Now, you have a choice. You can either watch it with your eyes open or with your eyes closed. Perhaps it's one minute long. Perhaps you'll want to watch half of it with your eyes open, half with your eyes closed, so you get the drift. And I don't mean one eye open, one eye closed. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this. Check it out. Cape Town to Dublin by Scooter, 2013. Video footage, Scooter Addicts. Music track, El Nino, courtesy of SA Acoustic Band, DNA Strings. Audio description, Jamie Achenbach. A deserted road. A lone cyclist carrying lots of jerry cans, African style, rides into the distance. Scooterists heavily overloaded come into view. Different angles show the riders and the mud-encrusted scooters riding by. The scooterists struggle to navigate muddy paths. Scooters take a tumble. 
The guys ride through massive water-filled potholes in rainy and wet conditions. The exhausted guys huddle under a makeshift red canvas shelter to avoid the rain. Scooters are walked through the heavy mud with difficulty. The road conditions are extreme and challenging. Cautious riding through heavy traffic. A dung beetle rolls his dung ball across the road while scooters are repaired in the background. The riders pass by a massive baobab tree. A side view of the rider with the sun setting in the distance. Hashtag blind man can. Now I really miss that two-stroke. I want to get back out there and ride in the mud. Obviously, not everything is possible. There are apps that help the blind people see, and I'd like to tell you about one today, developed by a young Italian and a young South African girl. It's called Bespecula, and what a fantastic app it is. It's fairly new. What it does is it pairs together, it's free by the way, so you can all download Be Specula. It pairs together a group of sighted volunteers and the blind community. So I can snap a picture of, well, almost anything with my mobile phone and send it through to this group of sighted volunteers and they'll tell me exactly what is in the picture, either with audio or with text. So this is an incredibly helpful tool if you're wanting to check the dosage on your medicine bottle or the expiry date on your fresh goods. Sour milk is not so nice. It's a great tool, as it has been for me, to distinguish whether you're about to chop a red or white onion. And being the perfectionist chef that I am, I certainly don't want to chop the wrong one. In fact, I even used it this morning to make sure my socks were matched. <laughs> I hope they didn't deceive me. <laughs> In an accessible world, I have managed to cook gourmet meals for friends and family. I've managed to travel the world by ocean, by air, by road and by rail. I've managed to build a garden cottage behind my home. I even got to marry the love of my life, who will collect me off the stage so that I don't fall off just now. <laughs> but most importantly, I've managed to write over a million words. Everybody here can make themselves more accessible. So let's challenge the developers of software, as well as apps, the designers of websites, if you don't label all the icons on the screen correctly, and when I hover my little finger over them, my beautiful little finger over them, <laughs> and it just tells me button or picture, I can't navigate. I, I have no way of communicating or knowing what's going on. That little shopping trolley in the top right-hand corner, if it doesn't say checkout, you're not doing business with me. And remember, there are 285 million people like me around the globe that you're not doing business with. Retail and service industries. The next time you do staff training, perhaps you will take a minute or two to make your employees aware of the plights and the sufferings that we do face as a blind, people, blind community. In fact, uh, many times I've sat in a restaurant with my good wife just to have the waiter come to us and say, what would he like to eat? The number one rule is that I'm blind, but I have a voice, I can't speak. And I certainly know how to order my own food. It's a cheeseburger, by the way. <laughs> she would order some healthy rubbish, which I don't want to have. <laughs> Let me challenge everybody here today. You can all make a difference. I'm sure that some of you might have already seen my trip scooter. It's parked on Skeleton Bridge just outside here. Well, you'll certainly see it in your lunchtime. Go and take a selfie. I'll be there during lunchtime. Take a selfie with me, if you like. And when you tweet it, remember to use the hashtag blind man can, as well as the hashtag TEDxCT. And please, tell me who you are. Tell me what you're wearing. Tell me what you look like. Tell me something about yourself. And I can't see, so feel free to embellish <laughs> in any way you like. <laughs> I will either find the like button. Is there an unlike button? <laughs> I'll look for it. In an accessible world, blind people are not only able to live a full life, but they're still able to achieve their dreams, their ambitions. And if that is be a writer, you can. If it means being an adventurer, you can. In an accessible world, Dan Parker became the first blind man to race on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Dan lost his sight just four years ago. And two years later, he was out there. He was the world nitrous land speed racing champion. Two years later, he was out there drag racing again. And not only did he have no assistance other than a in-helmet navigation system that gives him audio signals. 
But he built most of his car and bike himself. Wells, cuts, grinds, does everything. It's phenomenal. In an accessible world, Trevor Thomas has managed to hike over 20,000 miles on America's most rough, rugged, and remote hiking trails with no assistance, only that of his guide dog, Daniil. He was the first blind man to complete a six-month trek along the Appalachian Trail. Again, just him and Daniil. Wonderful. In an accessible world, Caroline Casey from Ireland, shortly after discovering that she was in fact blind, had the adventure of her lifetime. She went and rode an elephant across India. And today she works as an advocate for accessibility and has even taken to the TEDx stage herself. In an accessible world, I have managed to become the travel and adventure writer that I always aspired to be. I just never thought that I'd become a blind travel and adventure writer. Let me leave you with this last thought. When you face an obstacle that is totally insurmountable, just stop, breathe, think, and then you'll find a way around it. If you just keep an adventurous spirit and some determination behind you, you will find a way around it. You can do anything. In an accessible world, a blind man can do anything that a sighted person is able to. Helen Keller said that life is either a great adventure or nothing. Thank you very much.